Hey, Davion. Hey, Davion, congratulations. We have several questions in the queue for you, but starting off, do you want to give us some general impressions on the game? Uh, it was a really tough game. Uh, Wisconsin's a really fundamental team. Uh, they're really um, talented. Um, they listened to their coaches. Uh, they made it hard for us defensively and offensively. Um, it was just a really good win, though. Our first question comes from Kendall Kout. Um, one moment. Hmm. Hold on just a second. I apologize. I'm trying to open Kendall's line. Kendall, can you try and speak? Here we go. Kendall, sorry, yep. your line is open. Apologize. Great. Can you all hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Thanks, Davion. Uh, Davion, you all had a lot of lob opportunities today. What about Wisconsin's pick and roll coverage? Do you feel like you guys kind of exploited to get so many lobs today? Uh, it was definitely similar to um, Illinois. Um, it, they dropped coverage is uh, something that we love to see. I mean, um, we kind of got used to it. We used to do it in practice. Uh, we had to switch it up a little bit. So we just tried to take advantage of the, uh, what the defense gave us, and uh, we, we did great today. Our next question comes from Curtis Quillen. And Curtis, your line is now open. Hey, Davion, Curtis Quillen, KCEN Channel 6 in Waco. To get back to the Sweet 16 for the first time since really any of you guys at Baylor were on the roster, how special was this win for you all? I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat the question, please, Curtis? A little bit louder. Hey, Davion, Curtis Quillen, Channel 6 in Waco. To get back to the Sweet 16 for the first time since any of you guys on the roster have been in Waco, how special does that make this win? Uh, it's real special, man. We just uh, give credit to all of the – uh, the guys behind the scenes, the GAs, um, the coaches, and um, all the managers that helped us uh, with this win, man. It wasn't just it wasn't just us. Uh, we all came together. Um, we all had one goal. I mean, the job's not finished. Um, we're just going to keep playing hard and try to take one game at a time. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next question comes from John Werner. John, your line is open. Uh, yeah, Davey, I'm John Warner, Waco Tribune Herald. Did you feel like maybe there were a little less nerves coming into the game today? And, and what did you feel like was working for you, for you guys? Oh, uh, it wasn't really nerves. Um, we prepared all our all our practices for this for this, for this moment right here. Um, all the times, the COVID protocols we had to go through, uh, we all prepared for this moment. I don't think anybody was nervous. Uh, we was all excited to play. Um, we just blessed to be able to play um, in this tournament um, to – Give credit to uh, all the people behind the scenes in the NCAA tournament that's given, it a, given us a chance to, to play these games with this COVID going around. But yeah, I don't think it was no nerves. Our next question comes from Chuck Carlton. Chuck, your line is open. Yeah, I was curious, second half, you guys weren't playing your best, but Wisconsin never got closer to seven. Every time they got seven, you guys had an answer. What does that say about you guys? Uh, we knew those guys were going to go on the run. They're a really well-coached team. Uh, we just try to limit their transition, um, limit their shots, limit their threes. I mean, they're big and pass, shoot, and um, get their teammates open. Their guards are really well of getting into the paint and getting looking up for people for wide open shots. I mean, we just uh, we did a really good job um, stopping with the momentum, um, scoring back to back. I mean, we in the long run, I think uh, we're gonna have to stop those uh, those runs, though. Our next question comes from Zachary Brazilier. Your line is now open. Uh, Zach Brazilier, New York Post. Did have you guys felt more like kind of yourself so far in this tournament? You know, if you didn't finish maybe quite as well as you have especially defensively, do you feel like you guys are getting back to the team that looked like the best team in the country in the middle of the season? Yeah, for sure. I think those practices uh, before the tournament really helped us on our defensive. Uh, we really uh, pride ourselves on um, just making things hard for other teams, uh, giving ball pressure, uh, not making them feel comfortable, making them keep dribbling the ball and not just be able to look. So I think uh, we definitely are getting back to ourselves. There's a lot of things we uh, got to work on. I mean, we're going to watch that in film and correct it for the next game. And we're just going to keep preparing for each game. Our last question comes from Kevin Longquist. Kevin, your line is now open. 
David, you guys did a, such a great job on Trice today. Uh, you know, he, you held him like five of 17 from the field. What was the key against him? Because he is their most prolific scorer. Yeah, he's a really good player, man. Um, we just try to uh, keep a body on him at all times. We try not to give him open looks. We gave him some open looks, but uh, he's really he's really good uh, getting into the paint. Um, he's really good. His jump shot, uh, he can really shoot the ball. He can run a team, man. He's, uh, he's a really well-coached dude. Uh, he's a really uh, cool dude. Uh, you can tell that he worked on his game a lot. I mean, uh, yeah, he was just really good. I mean, we just try to limit his, um, his looks. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll be joined shortly by Coach Drew. I'm going to lower all the hands. And if you'd like to ask a question of Coach, please raise your hand using the raise hand function. Thank you. Hey coach, congratulations. We have several questions in the queue, but why don't we get started with your opening comments? Well, for, first and foremost, uh, really uh, uh, impressed with our guys as far as their preparation and coming into the game, knowing uh, how hard it was going to be to beat Wisconsin. We saw how well they played against North Carolina, such a older, mature, senior laden group. We knew they didn't want to go home and uh, really, really, uh, knew that their, our guys were locked in through the scouting, and I thought we'd play well. Now, four, four turnovers and 15 assists, I didn't know we'd play that well, but that, that's, that's a really good number against uh, a really good team. Our first question comes from Dan Wopen. Dan, your line is now open. Hey, Scott, how are you? Good. How are you doing today, Dan? I'm doing well. Um, you know, when you, you look at the tournament, you saw what happened to VCU yesterday and, and the COVID pause is happening at different times. When you guys went on that late season pause, did you have sort of a long-term thought that, that maybe, you know, to have it happen right then might benefit you 
in the long run? And, you know, as you look back on it now, do you feel like you're building back toward where you were before that? Dan, you sound like me, an optimistic guy, because when the pause hits, your your first instinct is we're in trouble, uh, and especially a 21-day one. But I, I was thinking the exact same thing you were, and that was if if and when we could play long enough, uh, it would help us from the standpoint when you're away from the game for three weeks, you're watching everyone else play, um, it makes you hungrier to be back together and to be playing. So I, I do think now that we're back where where we were prior to the pause defensively, I think it is, I mean, like in, in, in our team room and we, when we spend time with each other, uh, it's a blessing. No one's on any, each other's nerves or anything because February can be a grind during season. And we did have have some time away and, and got to reflect and say, man, it's really fun to play rather than watch everyone else play. At the same time, there is no book. There is no guarantee you're, how you're going to come back, when you're going to come back, and if if you're going to be able to, to make it far enough where it can pay off. And uh, right now, I think uh, uh, defensively, the last two games were a lot better than we were uh, prior to them. Our next question comes from Curtis Quillen. Curtis, your line is now open. Hey, Scott, congratulations. Um, to get a win against a good team, but – with a, such a drastic style difference than anything you guys have seen this season, how much more does that relieve some nerves that you guys might have between games going into the Sweet 16? No, I don't think anything re relieves nerves during March Madness. I mean, nobody wants to stop playing. No one wants to go home. And uh, in, in a quick prep, playing against an offense that you haven't seen and they run it so well, uh, they don't beat themselves. Uh, a lot to be concerned about, but I think the preparation our guys put into the game is where the game was won for us and uh, hats off to I mean we have a player led team those guys buy in um, they were locked in and that gave us a chance to be good today and how how much special was this win to get back to the Sweet 16 for the first time in a while and the first time with really anybody who's on this roster now well, I, I can tell you, uh, being back in the NCAA tournament after last year and so many people not having a chance to experience it but uh, uh, so many new guys because I mean uh, a lot of times uh, people that are playing a lot of minutes are upperclassmen so they graduate if they're young usually they turn pro so a lot of first year guys in the NCAA tournament so a lot of jitters a lot of nerves in that first game I thought this game we, we had settled down a lot more but I know everyone's really excited I mean you grow up living if, if, with college basketball March Madness is what it's all about and uh, it's such a once in a lifetime experience our next question comes from Chuck Carlton, Chuck, your line is open. Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News. Uh, Scott, you weren't at times playing your best basketball in the second half, but every time Wisconsin cut it to seven, you guys were able to answer. What does that say about this team? Well, first and foremost, when we lead, we had that lead at halftime, uh, we went in the locker room and, and great teams don't go away. And Wisconsin, we knew what was going to make numerous runs. They weren't going away. Uh, but but I, I thought our players, like you said, every time uh, uh, they had a big shot or, or or we needed a big play, our guys came up with it. And and at the end of the day, very similar to the end of the half. I mean, they hit that three, and then Adam hits that three. And uh, uh, we did a great job answering today. And that was a big momentum play with Adam's three before the half. It was a great pass by Davion, too, to pitch ahead instead of just chucking it up like a lot of times people do. Our next question comes from John Werner. John, your line is open. Yeah, hey, Scott. Uh, you mentioned before the last game you thought there were some nerves. Did, did you see more of a comfort level today? Especially, uh, it seemed to really show during the second part of the first half where everything was really going well? Most definitely. I mean, with four turnovers, normally nerves lead to turning the ball over, and I thought our guys did a great job taking care of the basketball. Every coach in the country would take four turnovers and smile every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Our next question comes from Kendall Cout. Kendall, your line is open. 
Hey, Scott, John picks up his third foul in the first half. What did Matt Meyer's ability to switch screens and do so much offensively give you all today? Well, Matt was huge uh, uh, with John in foul trouble. And, and, and again, you, you got to have depth and you got to have multiple scores. We have a lot of people who are capable of getting us 20. And it's not every, your night every night. Um, Maceo's been on a tear. Um, tonight he didn't shoot it as well. And that's the great thing of having depth, different people to uh, pick players up. And uh, we, we have guys that uh, really do a good job creating creating for others too. So if they're not shooting, they can defend and they can help us in other ways. Our next question comes from Zach from the New York Post. Zach, your line is open. Zach Braziller, New York Post. What coach, what do you see defensively that's so different, you know, today and in your first Hornet game that maybe compared to the end of the regular season? Well, when, when we first came back after that three-week pause, uh, basically it was uh, 14 days. We played six games. I think we were on the road nine to 14 days, traveled like 3,500 miles. So you're just uh, prep, play, recover, prep, play, recover, and there's no practice time. So we never really had a chance, and, and, and if you look at it, um, let's say you shoot one time in three weeks, you're not going to be a good shooter. Well, same thing with defense, and defense is five on five, so it's rotations. It's kind of like trying to run your own offense or set plays w without we going one on oh. You're not, your timing's all off. So defensively, we just had a lot of errors, a lot of breakdowns, uh, and, and we really needed after that Oklahoma State loss in the Big 12 tournament, we needed some practice days. And really tribute uh, um, uh, our success of coming back to our upperclassmen. It's a player-led team. They bought in. We needed to practice well. We needed to practice hard. We needed to get better. And a lot of times coaches can say we need to do something, but if players don't give it 100% and they're not bought in, it doesn't work. And they really got better. And our defensive rotations, our, our, our defensive airs are way down compared to where they were when we came back from the pause. Our next question comes from Andrew Miner. Andrew, your line is now open. Yeah, Coach, if you look at the box score, really even across the board, with the one exception of points off turnovers where you guys outscored them by 14, which turned out to be the difference, what was the key to your defense, especially when they started off on that you know, pretty hot 7-2 to and then at the end when they were trying to make one last push? Well, I think – uh, it, it starts with Davion uh, uh, up front, and then we, we have uh, guys that are all bought in um, to try to uh, apply as much ball pressure as possible and make things difficult as possible. And because of that, uh, I think uh, Wisconsin runs uh, uh, their offense so well, a lot of times with their movement, they get just easy looks and easy buckets. And um, because of our guys' intensity, it, we try to make it minimize those. Now, you're never going to shut out a great team like Wisconsin, um, but uh, you just want to make things as difficult as possible very similar to in football if you got a great quarterback you better put a lot of pressure on them otherwise they're going to be just running offense and uh, I thought our pressure really helped us our last question comes from Chris at KWTX Chris your line is now open hey coach it looked like the your guys were just having fun out there today how important is it for them to to be able to stay loose and continue to enjoy themselves even as the the stakes get higher and higher uh most, most definitely at the end of the day it is just a game and even though there's so much at stake um as coaches uh, uh i think i think we miss it if we get them too tight that they can't enjoy this experience so uh we we, we try to do our best to keep them loose make sure they have fun along with be focused and 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 into the moment um um, but uh, that's where you, you have an upperclassman. When, when a coach is uptight, they can say, hey, coach, we got this. And, and then I believe them because they've, they've had it. <laughs> so uh, sometimes they keep us having fun. Uh, but as, as, as a parent, as a coach, when you see your guys having fun, it's just like Christmas time. Kids open presents. They're happy. You're happy. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations again and best of luck in the next round. Thank you. You guys have a great day. Thank you. That's it for our post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at www.nca.com backslash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you all for joining us.